What? You don't have a exercise bike in your shop? <laughs> Well, here it is, my 350 square foot two car garage shop building. I know it looks a little messy right now, but this is kind of how I will have it when my cabinetry and everything in the shop building is built, and the layout will remain pretty well the same. The power for this building is uh, ran from the home breaker box and has two dedicated 20 amp service breakers. I really don't have much need for anything bigger than that at the present time. But like I said, it is a normal two car garage except it is a little wider than usual. It accommodates a storm cellar on one side which will house a lumber rack right over that. But why don't we go ahead and just get started with the tour. Well. What we're going to start with now is I'm just going to basically bring you right dead square to the middle and show you the true heart of my shop, the actual workhorse that I use probably 90% of the time and that is my table saw. What this is is a modified Delta 10 inch contractor's table saw. Uh, this was actually given to me uh, by my wife's grandfather who passed away uh, a few years ago and he was an avid woodworker by hobby. Uh, he just did things like carvings and uh, he even made little faces out of golf balls. He did uh, really intricate ducks and um, little figurine people about yay tall. And he had those scattered all throughout his house. And after a while he became to the point where he wasn't able to do that anymore. He was on oxygen and couldn't uh, subject himself to a lot of the dust that flies around when you woodwork. So he said that I could have anything that I wanted out of that shop. And one of the big things that I took was this table saw. Uh, it originally came with stamped steel uh, wings on both sides that were only about, oh, probably this wide. So whenever I had the original fence on here, it was not a very good, accurate fence. I always had to uh, mess with the screws just to get it to where it was going to be semi uh, parallel with the blade and that wouldn't last very long just because of how it clamped. So what I did is I upgraded it to a Delta T-square fence uh, and it was a 32 inch, uh, no I'm sorry 31 inch and after some time of using that especially with a big void past that steel stamp wing uh, that a lot of the things that I needed especially making cabinetry I needed a lot more versatility than 31 inches so I went and purchased a Beesmeyer 50 2 inch uh, fence that I incorporated my router table in. Tension tables that I made with a uh, kind of a backer board like you would put in a bathroom. It's actually got a white kind of a dry erase top that I thought would be nice to make notes on with Sharpies because I can take a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser and the Sharpie comes right off uh, or pencil even to make notes on for measurements while I'm working. And uh, it's held up okay. Some things tend to stick to it that I didn't want to. Um, 
but it, it still cleans up nicely. So I'll probably use this again whenever I redo this table because I want to do it in such a fashion that it's going to accommodate some cabinetry up underneath it that's going to stretch the length of the table uh, and give me adequate storage. But uh, also I wanted to make it in a uh, torsion box fashion so I can make sure that it stays nice and flat. Uh, like I said, I've got the router assembly uh, inside the table right here. Uh, it is a Craftsman 1 and 3 quarter variable speed uh, router that I outfitted with this Jessam uh, plate that I acquired from Woodcraft on clearance and uh, it was about half off of what it normally costs so I got a pretty nice deal on that plate. I did have to order uh, an adapter ring for it to uh, accommodate the router because it is smaller than a standard three horse router that Porter Cable puts out. The table saw is a uh, one and three quarter horse motor and it runs at about 3,500 RPMs and uh, it is adequate horsepower for the needs that I've had. There have been times sometimes that I've bogged it down with some really hard woods, but overall 95% of the time I've been really happy with uh, the horsepower that it puts out. Uh, we'll be taking some plywood and kind of blocking all that off so I can have it uh, for adequate dust collection because there's going to be a dust collection chute uh, that'll be up underneath that going out the back. Okay, just off to the side of my table saw, I have a filing cabinet that I acquired uh, from a garage sale for five bucks. Um, actually, I think my parents acquired it <laughs> from a uh, hospital garage sale and then they gave it to me. So I really didn't pay but for I keep it. All of my necessary like screws, um, brads for my nail guns, my um, pocket hole jig screws. Um, some of my dust masks are in here that are readily available. In the bottom drawer, uh, I have all of my DeWalt cordless uh, 18 volt setups like a reciprocating saw, drill, circular saw, flashlight. Over here I have my uh, Craftsman Professional 10 inch radial arm saw with the laser track system. And as you can tell, I don't really use it that much simply because I don't have it outfitted with a nice table. One thing about these Craftsmen, and not to knock Craftsmen, I've got a lot of tools that are Craftsmen, but this particular radial alarm saw, it's very difficult. As you can see, I can move it with one hand. Normally, they should lock fairly tighter. Now, I could dial this in a little bit better. There may be some things that I haven't adjusted, simply because when I got this from my father, he never did it. Uh, he bought it off of a uh, discount bargain show and got a really good deal on it. There was really nothing wrong with it. Uh, it works perfectly. Uh, it's just things like the annoyance of things coming out of square. What I have here just off to the side of my uh, radio alarm saw is my sliding compound miter saw from uh, Craftsman as well. Like I said, I have plenty of Craftsman tools. I really like their line. They're really affordable and user friendly for the uh, hobbyist woodworker. And I, when I started, that's what I was. I just did it for fun. But um, I still love I still love their tools. I go to Sears and still drool. It's a wonder they don't have rust prevention every time I go in. This was also acquired off of the bargain network that the radio alarm saw came from. Uh, I, the only thing wrong with it is it didn't have the blade guard. And I know that some of you have seen my videos when I was using this and you're like, no guards? What, what's wrong with you? And I was like, well, this is a discontinued model. There's not much I can do about it. I can't find the guards anymore. Uh, so uh, if anybody um, uh, Craftsman wants to send me a new saw, I would greatly appreciate it and I would give you much kudos for that. But uh, I, I love this saw and the uh, portable unit that it's sitting on is a rigid, uh, it's called an MSUV which is a miter saw utility vehicle. It almost acts like a dolly for your uh, compound miter saw. It's very handy to use. Now unfortunately whenever I redo the shop uh, this will have to go away because this is going to be incorporated in some cabinetry right here. This is a really cool unit though. I mean it will, uh, it latches right here and then it will fold down and latch down there. Now I've got some things in the way but it will latch and then you lift it up and these two legs down here just fold up and it kind of sits like a two wheel dolly. It's very cool. Oh and also these two roller extensions slide way out uh, to support long pieces of work that you might have going off this thing. So they adjust up and down, the legs adjust up and down, um, and they also adjust in and out. So it's pretty neat. And then right here I've got another Craftsman tool. Uh, this is a benchtop lunchbox style uh, 
surface planer. <coughs> and it's a very nice unit, I like it. Right next to the planer, I have got my uh, Delta hollow chisel mortiser. It needs to be cleaned up. There's some surface rust on the table that I've got to get off. Uh, but I really, really love this unit. Uh, it is a great affordable unit if you want to get into hollow chisel mortising without having to do all the hand work with chisels and a hammer. Um, this is my 18 by 36 Delta drum sander. Uh, I really have been pleased with this unit. It's got a nice big four inch port for dust collection up here. Now the drum is stationary, it's the table that moves, and the jet models, it's the exact opposite. The drum is what goes up and down. But this is a Delta, or Rockwell Delta, how do you say it? Yeah, Rockwell Delta, uh, six inch jointer. And it has the dovetail ways to go up and down. It needs a little bit of shimming, because right now they kind of sag. Uh, so I gotta do a little bit of work on it. Uh, and also there is the uh, little end cap on the fence in relation to how it bolts to the table and it got cracked uh, either before or after my brother had it because uh, when I got it that's how it looks and I can't keep the fence perfectly 90 degrees. So I did find a spare part on eBay to replace that and uh, once I get it shimmed it will be a nice, nice jointer to have. Uh, so what I have over here is a uh, Delta dust collection unit. Uh, now this unit I received for Christmas from my wife. and. Um, it was a great addition to the shop, especially a two-car garage such as this, because you really don't have the room to set up a big cyclone against the wall and then plumb it with all of your ductwork to run a really high-end dust collection system. For something like this, a two-car garage, this is perfect. Welcome to my wall of horror. Unfortunately, whenever <laughs> I first got into my uh, first house, uh, it was a one car garage, it also did not have any kind of storage whatsoever, so I bought these at a discount store uh, for about half of what they normally cost, and I got three of them. And they've done their job well for what I have had uses for them, but as you can see now, because I have acquired more tools and more stuff, to say the least, um, they are just overflowing, and I don't have adequate uh, storage space in this shop for things like this. Um, so whenever these come out, there is going to be a wall of cabinets that's going to be here from floor to ceiling, but there will also be a desk over here, and a lot of my storage problems are gonna be remedied because right now this is all I've got. Okay, uh, I'm gonna show you a few of the um, tools that uh, I have acquired here. Uh, one of the things I wanted to start off with, and I know a lot of you are probably wondering, how did I get the name Rockin' H Wood Shop? Okay, when I got the table saw from April's granddad, he was a rancher. Um, well, I wouldn't say a rancher. Well, yeah, he was a rancher, he wasn't a farmer. Yeah, he was a rancher. And he had a cattle business, and his brand for his cattle business was Rockin' H. It was an H that had a little uh, U-shaped rocker underneath it. April's mother, bought that brand after he passed to continue keeping it because it really meant a lot of uh, sentimental value to her. And they gave me the actual electric brand uh, that they used to brand their cattle. And that is what I use on all of my work. Anytime I build something, I plug this in and I put it in like an inconspicuous area and I brand the Rockin' H to it. Um, it's just kind of like my calling card for whatever I do. Uh, I was very happy and honored to be able to uh, keep this and carry it through uh, in his name. So uh, that right there is very, very special to me. And let's see, I've got my little Craig uh, pocket screw jig. Uh, if any of you guys do a lot of uh, joinery that mass produce, but you still want strong joints, get you one of those. It's about $100. Uh, you can get the entire system, screws and everything uh, for about 100 bucks. It's a very nice uh, addition to your shop. Recommend that. Let's see, I've got a little Porter Cable circular saw here. Uh, this was a Christmas gift from my folks this year. Uh, I was really needing a good circular saw because all I had was a DeWalt 18 volt cordless and this uh, does really well. I even made a jig uh, to cut panels on uh, plywood with this saw and uh, been very pleased with its performance. Air nailers, I'll go over those real quick. Um, what I have here is a little pin nailer that I got from Harbor Freight. Uh, I can't even, let me see, it's, it's a central pneumatic, so it's not a very high end, but 
everything that I've done with this, I've been very pleased. It's not broken once. I've had one jam, uh, because the pins are so small. I mean, even if you had a high-end nailer, they're gonna jam, and one did eventually. Uh, but I've been very, very happy. You just have to be careful, because there's no guard. You can shoot these things like anybody's business all around your shop if you're not careful. Um, and just don't have your fingers close to where you're nailing, because because those nails are so small, they can go anywhere they want and just pop right back out the face and right into your thumb. Feels wonderful. Okay, DIY people. This is something that you're gonna need to think about because if you do woodworking or DIY projects in your home uh, and you don't like hammering nails by hand, you're gonna need to get you a nice nail gun. Um, you'll need a brad nailer and a um, finish nailer as well as a stapler. And luckily enough, Simco has such a kit. I found this at Home Depot and it comes with a finish nailer, a brad nailer, and a stapler. And they hold all different sizes. I believe the stapler, it holds half inch to one inch. The brad uh, finish nailer rather holds five eighths to an inch and a quarter. And let's see, the brad nailer holds one and a quarter to two and a half. So uh, it, it's a very nice set. Uh, it comes with oil, a few pieces to go for your air inlets. Um, uh, I, I highly recommend getting a set instead of buying them individual. You'll pay way much more money for uh, individual guns than you would buying a complete set like this. And I think even Porter Cable has a finish nailer and a stapler. Um, I think it comes with a pancake air compressor. So you basically get the whole kit and caboodle with that. Uh, so that's something to look forward, uh, forward to on Christmas time if they still have that kind of deal. But uh, DIYers, I highly recommend getting air nailers, especially if you're going to do woodworking. Uh, it's just a nice starter set. It's not the first thing you should get, um, but it's one of the first few things you should get after your basics. So think about that. I found this on TV and it, they, it's, it's sold at uh, Lowe's. Um, what this is, is a uh, Rockwell VersaCut, and it's actually a circular saw with a plunge cut feature. Um, it was a very handy tool in some places, especially retrofitting that cabinet, cutting the countertop. Uh, the blade is a little bit coarse, I mean it's kind of like a utility blade, uh, but the dust collection on it is phenomenal. Um, I was very pleased with the dust collection, didn't have much dust to clean up afterwards. Uh, and it's also got a little depth gauge on the side here for your plunge. Uh, works very, very well, holds in place nicely. And it also has a laser guide right on top, uh, just like a high-end circular saw. So uh, I can't remember how much this was. I think it was about 125. It's not exactly inexpensive, but for the things that it can do, cutting sheetrock and things like that, I mean, this is the beans. So there you go. There's my recommendation for something like that. All right, time for another luxury tool for any woodworker who does a lot of dovetailing. Um, what I have here, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna go over this, but keep in mind this particular unit is discontinued. It's no longer made. You can get its little brother, the 16 inch, but this is the 24 inch variable space Porter Cable Omni Jig or dovetailing jig. I love this jig. Like I said, I've dealt with the lead jig and uh, I helped my dad set it up at his house. And uh, It's a nice jig, don't get me wrong. It's a very nice jig for the money. But um, the user friendliness of it just wasn't there for me. And whenever I found this jig and saw the demonstration of how it worked, it, it was almost dummy proof. But you can do half blinds, uh, you can do uh, rabbited half blinds, through dovetails, uh, single pass half blinds, I think I said sliding dovetails, and uh, it comes on the front here a nice little uh, accessory bar that uh, it comes with the unit. And the lead jigs don't have this, you have to actually buy the vacuum assembly uh, to go on it to actually get the uh, added support. But when the router is sitting on the fingers, on the lead jigs it wants to tilt because there's nothing back here. Well the porter cable took care of that. Uh, they put an accessory bar back here that helps support your router as it goes across the, the stock. And I also have right here 
a vacuum attachment that I found. Like I said, it just discontinued, so I can't really find these, but um, I did find a website that carried some things, and it slides. There we go. It's been a while. <laughs> But it slides up there like this and it catches a lot of dust. I was really very pleased with how it, uh, how it worked because every time I used this, I had a floor full of garbage that I just had to vacuum up. Um, but I've been very, very happy. It's got these little things up here that you can set your router on top to uh, get the depth adjustment for your bit. Uh, so you're, as soon as you've got it set, you can just bring it down and go to work. Okay guys, well that pretty much wraps up this uh, part one of the part two, or, or two part series I should say, uh, of the Rockin' H Wood Shop shop tour. Um, like I said, next week we'll get started on uh, looking at the jigs that I have made in the past, and uh, we'll even do some upgrades on uh, some of the jigs that just don't quite work with my existing fence, and we'll uh, walk you through on how to get those done. Uh, it should be a fun episode, and I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you have any questions regarding anything that you've seen here today, don't be afraid to send me an email or comment on something. Uh, if, if you see this video on YouTube, drop me a line there, and I'll reply to it pretty dang quick. Um, I'm sure there are things that I didn't touch on, and like I said, if you guys have any questions of things that I may have skipped over that you want to see if I have or have had experience with, uh, send me a line and I will get back with you as quickly as I can and uh, I'm very excited to invite you guys into my shop I hope you enjoyed it and uh, I will talk to you guys very very soon so take care in your own shops and be safe